Hi everyone! In this video we're going to go over some common SEO issues that you might face when you have a WordPress website and we'll go over how to fix them as well. SEO is, is really important because a site that is optimized for search engines will appear higher on search engine result pages or SERPs. This leads to more traffic, clicks and ultimately more sales, signups, inquiries to your business. Sites that have a lot of technical SEO issues will have issues like poor performance and unreadable content which leads to sort of poor user experience. When it comes to analyzing your site for SEO issues, there are lots of free tools that are easy to use and very helpful to, ter to determine which issues need the most attention, which issues um, that are persistently kind of on your site, and it also give you some un basic understanding on how to fix them and what they are. Um, in this video, we'll, we'll be using a tool called SEO Ability SEO Checker Tool. Um, so if you just go online um, to SEO Ability and look for their SEO Checker, um, this is essentially a free tool that you can use to to look at what are the most pressing SEO issues um, and they've really good uh, explain everything really well and they put together a sort of report for you. Um, the way it works is that you will input your website name here, click on analyze website um, and then it will then generate this report. So if you go on to their homepage. Look for the SEO checker, so perform SEO check. Where it says URL, you just want to type in the URL of the website that you want to scan for SEO and just click on Analyze Website. And what it'll do is it will then take that URL and it'll scan it and it'll put together this kind of report and it will just kind of basically separate into different sections. And then you can go through each section and it'll show you sort of what you're doing right, um, what's okay, and what's uh, what are the main issues. Um, you'll get a sort of overall score here on the right and it'll look at things like your file size, your response time, um, and then things like your meta information, page quality, all of that. It kind of uh, puts that together in, in a report and in the beginning of the report it'll put together sort of like a task list and this will look different depending on which website that you're using. Um, everyone's task list, list will be different but it's essentially a list of all of the pressing issues that are on your site specifically about SEO and it uses a sort of traffic light system so anything in red is very important um, probably the main thing that you want to look at anything in orange means um, it's still an issue but it's not as pressing as the red anything in red and then anything in green like the green ticks it just means that you're doing it well um, nothing really to improve there so you essentially just want to go through each of your pages um, analyze each pages uh, let the SEO ability SEO checker analyze each, each of your pages um, and then go through the list of SEO improvements and then also just go through this report as well so you can see exactly what's going right so you can implement that on other pages um, and then you can also see what's going wrong as well. Um, the good thing about SEO ability is that with every item or every task that they have in your report it, they do explain exactly what, it, um, what you need to do in order to improve it or they explain exactly what that metric is that they're um, ranking you for. So for example, things like the meta title, if you're not sure what that is, if you go into the right hand column here, you can see this little question mark. If you click into that, it'll basically take you to the resource pages and you can see exactly what they mean by meta title and you can go through and see um, all the information about that and that way you have a better understanding of what it is that they're ranking you on, why it's important, how to fix it and why you need to fix it as well. Um, so it's a really good tool to kind of have um, and again it's free and you don't really need to have an account um, however if you do log in um, or if you sign up for free uh, you can uh, sort of save reports um, so you're not constantly uh, adding in new reports as well um, the other thing is that with the free version you can only scan the crawls you can only scan a uh, URL uh, three times a day uh, so you'll see whenever you go back to the SEO checker um, it'll let you know how many checks you have left today. So if you are wanting to um, have a bit more uh, crawl functionality here, you can go into their plans and pricing um, and you can see they have a basic plan, which is the free, which is the uh, free version that you you know already have when you sign up. Then you have the premium and the agency um, and each of them come with different sort of amount of projects and domains that you can keep scanning and keep checking, um, how many pages you can crawl and then um, how many uh, updates that you can have as well so it'll 
having one of the premium plans will basically allow you to kind of monitor a site and monitor a page as well for SEO for new SEO issues that um, can come up and that can be something that comes up as well. Um, but in this video today we'll just stick with the free version. Um, so you have the SEO checker here and what you want to do is click on profiletree.com or whatever the URL is and then um, and then you'll see the report being produced here. Um, and like before, you can go through and see all of the issues that you that tend to pop up as well um, in terms of SEO. So now it's time to look at some of the most common issues that you might face. So a really common issue that we see with a lot of websites are, peop are how people are using their link structure. So this is referring to anything um, like internal links, external links, and it can also be things like backlinks as well. So an internal link is a type of hyperlink on your website and it links to another page or another resource like a PDF or links to an image um, that's uh, on the same website. So it's essentially a link to that links to another part of your website um, and not doesn't take you sort of out of your website. Um, so an external link is the opposite. So the it's a link on your website, but it'll take you out of your website and maybe linking off to another website. Internal links um, can be found in your website uh, in different ways. So the main way will be in your nav bar. So all the nav bar, all of the links that you have in your nav bar that link to the different pages of your website all serve as internal links. Other links are call to action links. So buttons like get in touch, uh, shop now, buy now, submit inquiry. These are all forms of internal links and they all add to your, they all improve your SEO as well on the site um, and all your pages. So you can see not all internal links physically look the same. We've got some of the internal links appearing as the menu links. Some of them appear as buttons. Some of them appear as little icon sections as well. Um, all of these things serve as internal links, um, even within like a table of contents. Uh, the anchor links that you have on like a blog page, for example, still serve as in internal links. So there's different ways you can fit in internal links into your web page, into your blog, um, but they all count and they all add to your SEO. External links can be things like linking off to other websites. So for example, if you link off to um, websites that are under sort of like your umbrella company, things like that, and um, we can click into them and they'll essentially take you out of the website the user was currently in and onto the new website as well. Um, other inter uh, external links can be like social media links, so all these links here at the bottom that link to a Facebook page or an Instagram page or a tw Twitter page, they all serve as external links because they're taking you out of the website um, and onto another person's website. It's really important to remember that when you have or when you are adding external links, you want to open them in a new tab because while the user is being taken out of the website, you want to have you want to make sure that they have an easy way of coming back to your website um, through the tabs. So if they open a new tab, they can always go back to your to the previous website, um, just going back onto the tab. Um, if they open in the same window, then there's no really easy way to get back to your website if they ever want to. Um, so you want to make sure you always have them in as uh, opening in new tabs. Um, and that's just for external links only. Internal links are fine to be opening in the same tab and that in fact they should open in the same tab so they're not opening. So as people are exploring around your website with the internal links, they're not um, opening a new tab every single time which can get annoying and really bad for your um, user experience. Another thing you want to make sure about is uh, backlinks. So backlinks are also really important, especially for things like authenticity. Um, the way backlinks work, they're essentially incoming links to a website or web page but from another resource. So other websites are pointing to your, or other websites are linking to your website basically. Um, backlinks are a really sort of well-known ranking factor. So if a page gets a lot of external links pointing to it, essentially your authority grows and Google promotes it a lot more in search engine results. Um, um, another type of link uh, that also comes into play are nofollow links, but the nofollow links are basically links that don't follow the influence, that don't influence the ranking of your of the site that it's linking. So to make a link a nofollow link, you just add the uh, rel equals nofollow tag basically. 
So a lot of the common issues that we see is that there's not a lot, there's not enough internal links or external links. So again, internal links being obviously you've got the pages on your nav bar. These are internal links and then you've got pages such as in your get in touch. But other ways to add internal links will be uh, throughout your page of your website. Um, so if you, for example, um, within your blog pages, for example, um, it, blogs are a really good way to add extra uh, internal links. You can sort of, as you're writing the blog, if there are certain keywords that highlight, that um, kind of highlight to you, um, that you can also link off to other either other blogs or services on your website, um, blogs are a really good way to add that because they're linking off to other uh, elements of your website. So if you're talking about um, a service that you offer as part of your blogs, um, then you can also link to that service page within that text as well. Um, and you want to make sure um, you have links within your blog as well as, as, as well as within your uh, page content as well. The reason why internal links are really important is because Google track um, essentially how much people are exploring your site and the way people are exploring your site is through clicking on different pages of your site, whether that's going on another service page, whether that's going on different blogs. So you want to make that as easy as possible for your users. The more that Google sees that uh, users are clicking on to the other pages of your website, um, it signals to them basically that this is a sort of interesting website. Um, it's a website that users are finding useful and you kind of end up ranking higher in search engines. So internal links are really good for that as well. Um, so apart from internal links, uh, we also talked about external links and external and how external linking improves your SEO. So different ways to add external links can be if you want to link off to um, another website or another blog page that's different to yours. Um, even external links like social media, uh, icons, maps and directions, they all form as part of your external links. Um, external linking does improve your SEO. They essentially um, help search engines determine how useful your pages are and it also improves your sort of credibility as well um, so you want to make sure that you add a few external links in there as well it's really important with ex external link obviously you don't want to link too much to other uh, other websites because you want to keep people within your website as much as possible um, so that's why things like adding in sort of like the social media uh, links can add a lot of value to your post or a lot of value to your blog and things like that. Um, so it does have some effect on your SEO. Um, so you want to make sure that you have enough sort of internal links on your page as well as external links. Um, again, it's a, it's a very common issue that we see. Um, and the best way to do that is, so for example, in your internal link links, you just want to add more links within your blog pages, um, but then even within, for example, if you have a service page, um, you can add links to other services, um, and that's essentially kind of another uh, internal link. Um, you can link to contact pages um, and things like that. So uh, really easy, it's a really easy fix if, you do, if you're getting the error of not enough internal links, not enough external links, um, just to quickly add a few more links onto your website. Um, to kind of increase that sort of user users exploring around your site, um, as well as just giving a bit more context to users if you're using the external links as well. What's also important to to check about your links are things called 404 links. Um, so you might get an error, how many 404 pages that you have. So um, when a page returns a 404 error, it essentially means that that page doesn't exist anymore. So when people try to access a page that doesn't exist anymore, they get to see they see that 404 page, um, and you'll find that come across on um, websites. And sometimes their 404 page uh, will look like this. So it'll come up sort of page not found 404. And again, this only happens whenever you try to access a page that um, doesn't exist anymore. It's been removed, or sometimes you've uh, typed in a link wrong, and the um, so essentially you've typed in, typed into a page that doesn't exist. And you'll get a 404 error. It's really, really important that um, you, if you do get a notification, whether that's through SEO Ability or if you have um, Google Analytics or SEMrush uh, running on your website, and there are returning there are links that are returning 404 errors, that you fix them immediately. Uh, websites that re that can be really bad uh, user experience for your site. Um, if users are constantly 
seeing 404 errors on your site than whenever they click on something, then they are likely to click off your site fully, not, not come back, um, and things like that. Um, it does happen sometimes where you have a page on your website that's no longer useful, whether that's a really old blog or service that you're not offering anymore. Um, so it doesn't make sense, obviously, to have that page left on your site. So sometimes it is necessary to delete a page, remove a page. So, but it's really important if a page is, that has been published um, has been removed that you add something called a redirect, a 301 redirect. So 301 redirects basically is a, re uh, is a redirect for uh, your old link. And what essentially then what you can do is instead of that link um, showing a 404 page, you can redirect that link to either the home page or another service page. Um, and that way, instead of users seeing a 404 page constantly, they're seeing something, they're seeing a page that um, is either somewhere on the website or showing a service, serving a page that's similar to that what they might be looking for. Um, so there's two ways to kind of combat that. So either add the redirect link um, or just make sure that your 404 page is uh, as useful to the user as possible. So you need to design your own uh, 404 page. Either you can use template builders um, or you can do a custom design. But essentially a good 404 page will have uh, a, mes a message to kind of show, to let the user know that the page that they're looking for doesn't exist. An option to go back to the home page or even an option to, or different options to go to other pages. Um, whether that's linking off to your blog pages or showing other services that they might be looking for. Um, things like that. So you want to make sure that you have that in place and that you also have a 301 redirect as well in place for any old links that you might have. When you're on a WordPress website, there's different ways to add 301 redirects to your website. Um, both those ways are usually through redirect plugins. So there are two really good ones. One option is the redirection plugin. So if you go into your website, click on plugins, and then click on add new. And under keyword, uh, under plugins, you want to search for redirection. And you're looking for this redirection plugin um, over here by John Godley, and you just want to click on install and activate. and then just wait for the plugin to activate. So once the plugin, plugin is activated, if you go into settings, there should be a, a yeah, under tools, there is a new option for redirection. And this is how you'll basically add the new redirection uh, URLs. So what you wanna do is under the redirection tab, um, you'll need to sort of do a setup as well. So we'll just start off with, um, basic setup and you can decide if, which options you want to enable. So things like if you want to monitor permalink changes um, in WordPress posts and pages. So basically it'll monitor uh, any changes that you make to any of your posts or your pages. Um, or if you want to, whether or not if you want to keep a log of all the redirects and 404 errors. Um, this is a good thing to install. Um, it's, an, it's a good option to have. Basically if there are any 404 errors, um, the plugin will keep a track of that, so that way you can keep keep on checking to see if there's any new 404 errors that are coming up, and then you can sort of act on it as soon as they are, may, or as soon as you are notified. Um, but it will increase your database storage requirements, so just check with your hosting provider to see if you have enough storage for that. If you keep this on and you notice your site started to get a bit slow as you're using it, then just disable it. Um, because this could be a contributing factor. Again, it does use up a lot more of your resources. Um, if you do have this on though, you can decide if you want to store IP information for redirects and errors. Um, so it's up to you if you think that you'll find that useful. Um, if not, you can just uh, uncheck all of these anyway. And then you just want to basically um, allow them to keep, uh, keep setting up the plugin and the backend. And then you just want to click on finish setup.
and then you want to click on continue and now it's ready to begin. So this is essentially the redirections page and this is the page you'll kind of use to set up all the different redirections that you'll have. Um, so right now we don't have any so what you want to do first is click on add new and the first thing you want to type in is the source URL. So this is essentially the URL, the old URL basically that you want to redirect from. Um, so for example if we have this page here And then you want to click on redirection once you have the link. And so under source URL, this is where you want to type in the URL that you're um, deleting or removing. And this one here. Um, with the query parameters, you can decide if you want to ignore all parameters, if there are any, um, or if you want to keep it exact to match any order. You can just leave that the way it is. And then you want to give it the target URL. So this is the new URL you want users to be taken to um, if they were to click on the old link. So this can be any link on your website um, or you can link off just to your homepage. Um, in this example, we'll just link off to our homepage. Um, and then you can decide which group that goes in. Um, we'll just keep under redirections. Under settings, you can do more advanced settings. So when um, you can decide if you want to give it a different code. Um, so 301 redirect, meaning that it's moved permanently. Sometimes it's temporary redirect. Um, and sometimes it's permanent redirect. Um, usually you can be using 301s to kind of signify to Google that this is a removed page and it's been deleted now. Um, and then once you're done, you just click add redirect. And then all of your redirects are going to be set up here. And then what's going to happen is as people are you know, going onto your site, if people are accessing the old one, the hits tab here will increase. So it'll show you if there's more people um, still accessing the site. But because the redirect is in place, they're actually being redirected to the new URL that we've set up. And when was the last time the that old URL was being accessed and when was that URL was when when was that redirect being used? Um, so it's really important that when you are setting up redirects that you or when you are removing pages, deleting pages, that you set up a redirect for every single page that you move. Um, again, not only is it helpful for user experience, but it will help your uh, SEO any SEO issues that you have as well. Um, it's a very common issue that we see a lot when it comes to um, link linking issues on uh, with SEO. Other tools you can use to set up redirects are tools like Rank Math. So Rank Math have a redirections module, um, and this is free. Um, this isn't part of their paid platform. Um, this comes free with the plugin, um, but it's the same thing. So once you have Rank Math installed, you go into redirections, and you want to click on Add New Redirect. And again, you want to give it the source URL, um, and then you want to give it the destination URL. So in the other plugin, plugin it was called Target URL, and this plugin is called Destination URL, and you just want to give it the new plugin uh, the new URL, and then you want to give it a redirection type, whether that's a temporary move, permanent move, or a temporary redirect. Um, and then you want to give it a status as well. So the status will basically um, activate or disable the the redirect. So you want to click on active. Um, with the Rank Math plugin, what you can do is have multiple source URLs redirect the same URL. So if there's multiple pages that you're removing, but you know that the target URL is the same, then you can, what you can do is you can click add another and then just add in all of the URLs that, are, that you're wanting to remove and they'll all point to this sort of destination URL if you wanted to. And then when you're done, you just click add redirection. And then that's the um, redirection added. Um, same, same layout as the redirections one, so it shows you the source and the destination URLs and then it shows you the type, hits, created and last accessed as well. Also really important to note that you don't need both plugins, you only need one redirection plugin. Um, having more than one can cause some issues and some technical issues, so you want to make sure that you just have the one redirection plugin and you don't have both. So those were some linking issues. Um, other issues that can come up are the page titles. So page titles are basically also known as meta title or title tag. It's essentially the element in the head section of your web page and it defines the title of each page of your website. 
um, search engines use it and it's displayed in search engine results pages. Um, it's a really important element for Google and it basically allows Google to see what this what that specific page is about using that page title um, and it's made up of it should be made up of keywords um, that are particularly uh, important for that specific page as well. Um, the way it shows, so usually people will use it um, on their actual web page. Usually the page title that you have, um, the main title that you have on your page, people will use as their main uh, page title for Google. Um, but the page title essentially uh, sometimes isn't shown on the actual web page, but it's used for search engine result pages. So for example, you can see here, uh, whenever uh, you show up on the search engine results page, this first uh, heading here is essentially your page title. So uh, it's really important that the page title that you give is specific to that page and it describes as much as possible what that page is going to be about. Um, as mentioned before, keywords are used in the title and it's really important that you use the keywords that you want that page to rank for. You want to make sure that your titles of all your pages are optimized. Um, and things that you should keep in mind is that Google really only use about 580 pixels to display the meta title of your web page and search results. So essentially the length of it you want to make sure because you don't want to have a very long page title because what will happen is Google will kind of cut it off a little bit. Um, um, cut it off. Uh, so you want to make sure that you have it at approximately sort of 55 to 65 characters long um, as well. And you want to, and again, you want to make sure that the title that you're using has the keywords that you want that page to rank for. Each of the pages on your website um, have the capacity for their own meta title. Um, so you want to make sure that the title that you're giving is specific to that page. It's not as as broad as uh, anything else, basically. Um, your homepage title is important because your homepage tends to be on the, on the search engine results page the most. So you want to make sure that you get exactly what it is that your service or your company is about um, and have that added onto your website basically. Um, in terms of the content, the title tag again contains the most important keywords. Um, and But again, you want to make sure that it's optimized not only for SEO but also for users. You don't want to just put a whole bunch of keywords in there and just stuff your title full of keywords. Um, and that's something that Google can pick up on. They call it keyword stuffing. Um, so you want to make sure, yes, it has keywords, but it's also like hum like readable for humans, basically, um, that they can read that and they can understand what, the, what it's about. And it's not too difficult for them to understand either. Um, it should give sort of like a brief and concise impression of what that page is about, about to both the users and to both and to Google as well. Um, you want to avoid things like welcome or home because they're very generic, they're very vague, they don't give a lot of information um, and it should be appealing to your users in order to increase your click-through rates, especially for online shops as well. So using call to actions like uh, shop now or shop search and such products and um, things like that can offer sort of a uniqueness and it can sort of encourage some more click-through rate as well. Um, if you know title is specified or if it's not informative enough, Google will create a title for you um, and they'll do that based on the content of that page. So if you don't have enough content on that page, you won't get a good, um, you won't get a good title generated by Google. Um, it's very risky because Google will um, essentially it's automatically generated so um, depending on your content it might not be the most accurate um, title that you get so you want to make sure that you specify a title yourself. Um, another thing you want to make sure is that the title that you give on your pages is the you only use it once on your website um, obviously because essentially all of your pages should be different so the title of your pages should be different as well. Um, so yeah, key things to consider, you want to make sure that the characters um, are between 55 to 66, 65 characters. If you go back to the SEO report, um, it will uh, rank your, it will uh, basically rank your title and it'll essentially show you um, what you're doing right, what you're doing wrong. You don't want to make sure there's no duplicate words and how long it should be. Um, other things that you want to make sure is that there's no repetitions, there's no spelling errors. Um, 
it's meaningful and you want to make sure that the most important keyword as well comes first um, and that each of your titles and all your pages are individual and they're unique they're not the same ones that you're using on another page um, so that was the title and the next thing then is the meta description so title and meta description usually go hand in hand and it's the same thing so if you go back to the search engine results page um, you can see under the title there's also a meta uh, there's a little description at the bottom and this is what's known as the meta description so meta descriptions are basically another part another part uh, of the HTML code on a web page and similar to how the title provides a description the meta description as well provides a description of the content of that page um, this description isn't usually on the website it can be the same content that's on your website um, but usually whenever you add the meta description um, it's not something that's always visible to the user on the website it's visible on the search engine results page and they'll display it like this they'll show the title first and then they'll show the description um, Similar to how you would optimize a title, you would optimize the meta description in the same way. Yes, you want to stuff, you want to make sure that you use enough keywords in there, and that you're using the most relevant keywords specific to that page, and not like this website as a whole. Um, but you don't want to like stuff it fill with keywords, um, because again, Google will pick up on that and they'll mark it as keyword stuffing. Um, you want meta descriptions that will basically up explain your page and entice the user to kind of click through because what's happening is they're seeing this a description um, amongst other uh, search results uh, as well and you want to make sure that the uh, description that you gave is really accurate and uses the keywords that you want to rank for basically. Um, it's So Google will use this, the, the description and the title to evaluate what your website is about and uh, what keywords it should rank for basically. Um, so a good meta description is really important. Um, it has to be succinct and comprehensible um, as well. Um, again, you want it to be have enough keywords and laid out in a way that Google can read it and understand it, but you also want to make sure that it's suitable for users as well, that they can read it and understand it as well. Um, you want to make sure the keywords that you're using are meaningful um, and things like that. Um, you want to make sure that you have a meta description for every single one of your pages as well. Um, and similar to how if there's no title set for your page, then Google will generate a title for you. Um, it'll do the same with the meta description. So if there's not, if, uh, if you don't set your own meta description, Google will use the content on your pages and will create a meta description for that um, instead. So you want to make sure that you give your own meta description as well. Regarding the length of a meta description, um, Google displays approximately a thousand pixels of it in search engine results, so that's maybe around 160 characters. Um, if you don't, if you go past that, then basically your text will be truncated with a sort of dot 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 dot. Um, so users won't get that sort of complete information about the content of your page. So you want to make sure that you have. Uh, basically the correct amount of content so that users can see all of them. Um, so the main points to consider with your uh, user, with your page meta description, um, so similar to page title, you want to provide a concise and really understandable description of the page content. You want to integrate the main keywords into a meaningful sentence um, and you want to include, if possible, any call to action, especially if you're an e-commerce business. Um, and you want to make sure that the length is appropriate and that it's a unique meta description for every single page. Um, if you go back to the SEO report, it will scan your meta description and will give you, will let you know sort of if you've got enough um, words there, enough characters there, if you've got too much and things like that. Um, so you have that set up any, anyway for you as well. Uh, on your WordPress website, if you are scanning it and they're showing issues with your meta titles and meta descriptions, um, there's different ways to change that and to improve that. The best way to do it is through the Rank Math plugin. So with the Rank Math plugin, um, we recommend it the most simply because a lot of their, there's a lot of uh, tools that they offer that uh, come free um, and it's really easy it's a really easy plugin to use especially if you're um, a beginner at sort of optimizing the pages and, bl and blogs on your website 
um, and you're wanting to do it yourself, um, Rank Math kind of helps you uh, step by step basically and make sure all of your pages are, rank are optimized and it will also give you improvements on how to improve it. So once you have Rank Math installed on your website, what you want to do is go into Pages and click on any one of the pages that you want. So for example, if we go into the home page, um, and you can see in the top right there is a new tab for Rank Math. And the way Rank Math works is it will scan your that specific page and will give you a score of 100. And depending on the content and how you fix it, your score will either increase or decrease and again it's using a traffic light system so um, anything in red means uh, it's a big error you need to fix it as soon as possible if it's in orange then still errors but not as uh, urgent as any issues in red and anything in green means you're good to go so you want to make sure um, your score is in the green as much as possible um, in order to uh, add a meta description and a title using rank math what you want to do is come into the page, click on the Rank Math icon here, and this snippet here is what you're looking for. Um, essentially, the, the search engine result preview, and you want to click on Edit Snippet, and it's essentially showing you what users are seeing currently um, when there are when they are viewing your site in on search engine result pages. Um, they can see the title, um, and they can see the description here. So the description we haven't set yet. So what you can do is. Um, type in directly the title. Um, so you've got obviously the um, about title here. So we've got the title page and then you've got site name as well. What you can do as well is if you're a local business, if you're based in one place, you can also add the location. And again, that's another thing that Google will use to understand what your business is about. If they see that you're uh, Belfast in the is one of your keywords then they'll know you're a Belfast based business and they'll kind of put you to on cu customers search engine results if they are also based in Belfast as well um, people tend to search a lot for services or products within a certain location so having your location um, there as well um, will really help Next thing then is the description. So this is the meta description that we talked about. And again, you can talk, you can add essentially a meta description easily using this uh, box here. Um, and what's really good about Rank Math is that as you're typing, um, yeah, as you're typing, you can see on the top here, there's a little bar and it's essentially, that's there to essentially keep you right um, and making sure that you're typing in an appropriate length as possible. So it gives you, um, the pixel size, so how many pixels essentially this your meta description is size wise, and then how many characters. So you want to make sure that it's in green as much as possible. So right now we've written too much. So you want to just take out um, uh, take out some of the words, and you want to just kind of edit this so that it's within the limit basically, um, and that you have um, enough words in there as well. And it's the same with the title. Um, you want to make sure you have it's the length is um, as how it's meant to be, and that you have enough keywords in there as well. Um, and again, you just kind of go through that and just make sure that um, it fits and that it's descriptive as well to exactly how you want it. Um, and then once you're done, you just X out of it, and that is your uh, title and your description saved as well. Um, and then you just want to click update, so you have your title and your description already set up as well. So title and meta description go hand in hand, um, and again, it's really easy to add a title and meta description with the Rank Math plugin. Um, the SEO ability report will essentially scan the title and meta description of the specific page that you've asked to scan, and they will let you know exactly how you can optimize it, what's missing, or if you're actually uh, doing well with the, either the title or the meta description. Um, but title and meta description, you want to make sure that you have that set for every single one of your page and your posts. And as we've seen, a lot of people sort of ben really benefit from it. It can have a really positive impact on your SEO and tends to be a really common thing that people tend to miss out, usually because they don't know how to do it. 
Um, but it, once you once you know how to do it, it's very easy, very kind of simple to kind of set your own meta descriptions as well. The next thing then uh, that is tend to be a huge SEO issue that a lot of people um, seem to have on their reports are image SEO. So not only do you can your search can your uh, the written content on your page can be optimized for SEO, but all the images that you use can also be optimized for SEO using something called the alt text or alternative alternative text. So alternative text or alternative attributes are essentially an HTML standard. They're essentially texts for images um, and they are used for not only search engines but also for uh, users on websites, especially for users who have some accessibility issues. So any of the images and graphics on your website, they all have the capacity for alternative text. Um, so essentially what that means is they all have space essentially for you to write a description of what that image actually is. Um, this is because not all users are capable of seeing images. People with any uh, visibility issues, um, they obviously won't be able to see exactly what the image is. So it's really important that for every image that you add onto your website, there's some alternative text to go with it. Um, and that alternative text will essentially describe what that image is, um, describe it and summarize it, um, and then make the kind of web page look more appealing, basically. Um, so it's essentially sort of the textual alternative to an image. Um, not only is it used for sort of uh, to make sure the website is accessible, but if for any reason web browsers won't display an image, whether they can't find the image or it won't load, instead of showing a broken image, um, it'll listen, uh, instead show the alternative text um, in place as well. Um, so at least instead of seeing like a blank space on the right, they can actually just see some text that will describe what that image is meant to be and when they hover over certain images as well depending on what theme you use um, they'll be able to see the text as well to kind of give a bit more context um, so alt text really improve the usability of a page and make it more user friendly um, and it's good for even like screen reading programs for visually impaired people um, the screen readers will then read the text out loud so um, they can essentially uh, understand what that image is meant to be about um, and the way Google uses it, and they use it to find out what's visible on a page. Um, they will also use it, the text itself, and use it to understand a bit more context and understand what your site is about as well. They'll use that content to essentially get a better understanding of what your site and what your services are about. So both Google and users use it. Um, it can be a great way to add even a few more keywords onto your page um, because they're things that um, will um, essentially that you can rank for um, when they see sort of even like clients that you've worked with and things like that um, it'll provide sort of a different um, more text basically um, it's really important to note that not all images and graphics on your website will have alt, alt attributes so images of services logos um, and things like that will have, uh, will, is likely to, ha is good to have sort of alt text because they're essentially images that provide some information. Um, but there are some images that are essentially for design purposes only. Um, some images like line breaks, um, frame lines, uh, background images. Since those are exclusively used for visual images, um, for visuals, even aesthetics, then it's fine to have those just the empty alt tags for those because they're not adding any sort of content. They're just used for design, basically. Um, so you don't need to worry so much about uh, adding alt, te uh, alt text to those. But you just want to make sure they have alt text to images that are actually providing um, some content as well, uh, context as well. 
when you're on a WordPress site and you are noticing that you have issues with the alt text, there's not enough alt text in your pages. Um, the SEO plugin, or the SEO SEO ability um, report will highlight that to you. So if you go back to the report, um, you'll see on the if you scroll down and look for uh, images. Um, essentially it's a media list so it'll make a list of all the media that you have media being images and it'll show you which ones are missing alt attributes and which one have what are the alt attributes for the ones that you currently have so you can kind of essentially go through this list and see are there actually any images there that need an alt attribute um, and if they do then you can kind of work off that list um, so it's a really kind of useful way to kind of um, understand how uh, or what images they actually needs to be replaced as well to actually add an alt attribute, it's very simple. What you want to do is go onto the back end of your WordPress site. And then what you want to do is go into media. So this is essentially your media library. So all of the media things like your images, any documents, um, things like that, all of the images essentially that you upload, they're stored in a media library. And what you want to do is essentially click into the image that you want to edit and you'll see the sort of attachment details here and what you're looking for is alternative text. And this is essentially the meta description or the meta uh, alternative text, the alt text for that image. And it's within here that you want to uh, basically type in the description of what that image is. Um, and you want to be as descriptive as possible um, and if you can get a keyword in there that would be great um, but essentially ultimately this is for the user to understand what this image is about if for some reason they can't actually see the image and you can go through essentially all of the images on your site easily um, go into next one by one and essentially just type in the alternative text for all your pages um, again as mentioned before sometimes some images are there just purely just to add some visual um, context just to add some just for design or for purely decorative um, icons and things like that so things like that won't actually need an alt text so they're fine to leave that space blank but images that actually are there to kind of provide some context and when they're understood will make the text uh, easier to understand as well then those will need the alternative text as well so you can go through all your images one by one and then just see and add where the alternative text would be um, where necessary Alternative text, um, again, um, is one of those things that people don't realize um, is a thing and then also then just don't understand how to actually add it, but it's actually very simple. Um, it can take a long time, especially if your site has been running for quite some time and you've been adding photos um, as much as possible, so it can take some time to go back and then add those photos. Um, but once you do, um, you will get, you will notice sort of a difference in your SEO and it will help your user um, improvement as well. Um, and it's something that you can sort of you'll need to keep doing as you're adding more and more media onto your website um, and more and more images onto your website as well. The next thing you want to, the next uh, issue that comes up a lot uh, with uh, SEO reports and SEO reporting in general and audits um, are the head H1 heading and the general heading structure in general. So headings are essentially um, title, different sort of title uh, on your website um, in different sort of styling as well. Um, on your website, on web pages, the headings go from H1 to H6 um, and each of them sort of have a different sort of importance based on which one you use. Heading one are the most important headings. It's essentially the title tag, uh, the title heading basically. So it's the main heading on your website. And then you've got heading two, heading three, heading four, things like that. Depending on what theme you use, um, each different heading will have its own style. So a heading one will look very different to a heading three, a heading three will look different to a heading five, and so on and so forth. Depending on what theme that you use or what theme that you create yourself, you can decide exactly what each of these headings will look like. But usually um, heading ones tend to be the biggest in terms of font size, heading six tend to be a little bit smaller, or the smallest ones. Um, but again, that's purely uh, depends on the theme 
as well and what colors and what fonts are being used for each of these headings. So the reason why headings get struck, uh, gets flagged and why they're so important um, is because they are very useful when it comes to structuring the content um, of your website and, make, and making sure that they're structured in a very meaningful and easy to read way. Um, essentially, it improves the readability of your content for visitors on your website. Um, you'll find this yourself when you are on a website web page. What you'll do is before reading everything first, you'll actually scan for headings um, with the headings so you can get a general understanding of what this page is going to be about. So usually you'll see um, you've got some text here and then you've got different headings as well. Um, not only do the headings kind of provide a sort of overview of what this page is going to be about, what this blog is going to be about, um, it's really, really good for essentially breaking up chunks of content so you can see. Um, so you can imagine sort of if we didn't have these like step one, step two and different headings, you'll just see a whole bunch of content um, just sort of on the page and this can make it really difficult to understand, to even begin to read what this page is going to be about. Um, headings are a really good way to break up uh, bits of text as well um, and Google can pick up on this so they can see um, the text in the paragraph tags and then they can see after the paragraph tags there's heading tags being used so they can see large chunks of text essentially being broken up by heading tags um, and they will see that as a good thing they will they'll basically mark that as content that's uh, easy to read um, Google will use headings in the same way and that it gives them it gives them an overview of what that page is about um, so it contributes to sort of search engines better understanding of really sort of different documents and different content on different pages as well. Um, as I mentioned before, he heading ones are the most important. They tend to be the title of the heading. Um, it's the most important heading on your page. So it should essentially summarize the entire content of a page um, and contain the most important keywords that you want this specific page or post to rank for. Um, so it's to summarize the entire content of the page as well. Um, and you want to make sure that it kind of piques the user's interest as well. Um, another really important thing to to note is that each thing, every single page um, can only have one heading one and should only have one heading one. So uh, you want to make sure there's a heading one pay tag on every single one of your pages, no more, no less. Um, and it should be the main heading of the page. That's another common issue that we see is that either there's no heading one um, being added to the site or that there's more than one heading one. Um, you want to make sure that there's one and only one on every single page. Um, when it comes to heading one as well, you want to avoid general wording like welcome, home, your company name, um, because they're very vague. They don't give, they don't uh, add a lot of context and it's kind of like a waste of an opportunity to get a really important keyword in there. Um, when it comes to the rest of the heading types though, so as I mentioned, there's heading one all the way to heading six. The rest of the headings, you're fine to use as many of those as you need. If you want to use more than one heading twos, if you've got um, a couple of heading fives, that's totally fine. As long as it makes sense to be using that um, those tags in that, in that specific moment, um, then you're fine to use multiple one of those as well. It's really just the heading one you want to be careful about. Um, another thing that you need to make sure is that you're make sure that you're using sort of the hierarchically descending order of HTML tags. So first comes the heading one tags, then you've got your heading two. Within the heading two, there might be heading three, maybe after heading three, might be heading four. Um, try not to skip uh, hierarchy levels. So try not to have a heading four coming after, coming before a heading two. Um, you also want to make sure that you choose the number of heading tags that's appropriate to the amount of paragraphs that you have. So you don't have too many headings. Um, it just won't make sense to, to make sense and it will look a bit odd. Um, so you want to make sure that you're using sort of that appropriate amount of well as well of, of headings as well. Um, when it comes to headings, um, again, so they're used to structure that long bit of content um, as well. Um, and make it really easy for users to read about. Um, one thing that you might consider, especially on blog pages, if you have a really long bit of blog um, and with a couple of headers 
uh, headings within that as well. What you want to consider having is maybe a table of contents or something like this on the left. Um, and what that basically does is essentially just shows you. Um, it's also um, it'll help you kind of break up the text basically. Um, having a table of content that um, essentially lists all the headings will essentially give users that overview as well to see what this page is about. Um, and it also provides sort of like an internal menu specifically for that blog. Um, so they can click around and go to specific parts that they actually want to read. Um, again, all about improving user, uh, nav user ability, um, user navigation, user experience, things like that. So if you do have a particularly long blog, adding a table of contents might be something worth considering. And you can do, there's loads of themes out there as well that do offer that as part of their blog template. But again, it's not something that you'd need if the blogs are particularly short um, as well. Um, but just something to consider. <clears throat> um, in terms of headings, those are usually the main issues is that there's uh, the H heading one tag isn't optimized and that there isn't enough headings to break up the text. So you want to make sure that um, you have that set up as well. In order to make sure that you have an appropriate amount of headings and that you have only one heading one tags, it really depends on the theme that you used um, to build your WordPress website. But usually um, the way you would add um, like different headings to your blogs it would be through the Gutenberg editor. So if you go back to the back end of your website, go onto the post page and click into one of your blogs. Um, most themes will allow you basically to edit your blogs using this back end editor, the Gutenberg editor. Um, and it's within this contents then that you can add or edit uh, different um, headings as well. So if we add some text to this bit of content, um, you can see we've got loads of co uh, paragraph content here. Um, and you can sort of see how this looks without any headings. It's very difficult to read. It's a lot of text. No one's going to sit and read all that. So what you want to do is start adding some headings. So um, if you want to add a heading in any place, what you want to do is move the pointer to whatever heading, to whatever, above whatever paragraph that you want to add it to. And then what you want to do, you can either add through the, add the block using the plus button here, or you can type in the slash button, backslash, and then look for the heading block. And you can see we've added a heading. So when you add a heading block, it automatically adds a heading to heading. Um, and you want to just type in the name, the heading that you want. Um, and then what you want to do then, if you want to maybe change what type of heading it is, you want to click into the heading and where it says heading two, you want to just click on the heading level. Um, so maybe you want to change that to heading three. And you can see because of the theme that we've used, the heading three looks a little bit different to the heading two. Um, you should never really use heading three or heading, uh, headings to make a certain text look different. It should, they should only really be used for semantic purposes, purposes to kind of signify an importance of certain words and certain lines. Um, if you want certain parts of your text to look different then using CSS uh, to do that would be better. Um, but you so essentially just want to start adding all of your um, headings to separate out the blog content and we'll add a few headings here. And you can see already um, a difference is made, so you can see it's a bit more broken up now. Within that, you can add more headings as well, obviously. Um, but just so you get an idea on how to add different headings, it's really simple using Gutenberg Editor. Um, again, this really does depend on your themes, but most themes will basically take the content from your Gutenberg Editor exactly how you've done it. So we'll take all of the H2s, H3s that you've added and put that um, on, their, on your website styled exactly how you need to. Um, um, as well. And again, one thing you want to make sure is that you don't add any heading ones. Usually with WordPress, with most WordPress themes, whatever title that you give at the top, the title of your blog, um, the WordPress theme will put that title as the title heading in heading one tags. So the title of your blog will be your heading one post. Again, just to double check that with your, uh, with the theme that you have. Um, 
Um, but it's usually the heading one, so you want to make sure the rest of the headings that you use are not heading one, they're heading twos, all the way down to heading six. Um, as a rule, you don't need to use every single heading type, so you don't have to use heading five if you don't need to. Um, it's good to use a variety, but it's not necessary to use every single heading, heading that's available. Um, you want to make sure that the headings are used to structure your content and you use meaningfully and then just not here and there, basically. Um, and then once you're done, just click update to kind of uh, save all of your changes. So those are the main uh, issues that usually come up when it comes to uh, improving the SEO on your website. Um, some other issues that can come up are slightly smaller and very, but at the end of the day, very easy to fix. Um, things like missing a favicon. So um, every single website has the capacity to be adding a favicon. Uh, favicons are essentially the small little icon that sits at the top of your tab. Um, you can see this little icon here. Um, at the top of the tab. So it's really, it's uh, for user experience mainly, um, but what essentially what it what it does, it's, it's essentially it's just a smaller version of your logo. Um, it's really useful whenever, especially with users that tend to have lots of different tabs open. Um, it's very easy to kind of, for them to kind of navigate back to your website um, because they won't always be reading sort of what the tab is. They'll look for the icon. So it's really easy to kind of navigate uh, between, for users to navigate between their tabs. Um, it also adds a bit of sort of authenticity and makes your, your website a bit more credible when they see a little bit more uh, a, a favicon added because when it's not added it tends to look a little bit unprofessional. Um, so adding a favicon uh, again is a common thing that people tend to overlook but it's really really important and if you already have a main logo set up then adding a favicon is really really easy as well. Um, again so mainly for user navigation and also user experience it's just a nicer thing to have on your website to make it a bit more professional um, to add a favicon to your site what you want to do is go on to your wordpress dashboard and you want to go into settings um, actually you want to go into your theme so you want to go into appearance and you want to go into theme and customize And you want to go into and you're looking for site identity so this will be on most themes on web on WordPress websites um, on WordPress themes especially the popular ones but you're looking for something called site identity it should be in the same place where you do your logo um, but essentially where you have your logo there'll be a smaller section for site icon and that's essentially your favicon you want to click on select site icon and you can use the logo that's already been uploaded um, and you can essentially just pick the logo. You can choose to crop it if you want to, um, but you can see a little preview as well of how this looks. And then you can either crop or skip cropping. And then you want to click on publish. Um, and that's as simple as that. That's your favicon added. And immediately your website will look a little bit more professional, a little bit more credible as well. Other things that people tend to look out, uh, overlook are things like the um, time zone. So basically, so whenever you schedule posts to publish in the future, you make a time of day to kind of share the content. If your time zone isn't set correctly, you're actually sharing your content. You're not sharing your content to when you think you are, and this can affect everything from like how many views um, you have on your work, how many shares that you have, and it can hinder sort of your organic engagement. Um, and again, really simple fix. What you want to do is go into the back end of your web WordPress website, go into settings, and you're looking for general. And you're looking for the date and time format, and you're looking for the time zone as well. Um, so the time zone, you can just basically either choose a city um, or you can choose the offset for the universal coordinated time. Um, whatever is easier for you basically, but you would just pick whatever time zone that you are um, or whatever city that you're in as well. You also need to make sure that you have the um, date and time format as well, exactly how you want it as well. Um, and that'll sort of help the timing issue 
um, for your posts as well. One thing you definitely want to make sure of um, is uh, look out for any sort of plugins and themes that you're not using. So um, this does actually negatively affect your SEO because um, having too many plugins on your website can slow down your site and a slow site will lead to people clicking off your site. Um, if your site doesn't load within literally a few seconds, then people won't be coming onto your site. They'll click off and try something else. Um, and one of the main things that contribute to a slow loading site are plugins. So any plugins that you have that are deactivated, um, definitely the first thing you want to do is remove them. If you know that you're, they're not going to be activated anytime soon, you don't need them, they're not going to be adding any more to your site, then um, go through, deactivate all your sites, or deactivate your plugins one by one. You don't want to deactivate all at once, especially if there's a lot, because this can cause some time out issues. But definitely you want to go through each of your plugins one by one and make sure that they've been deactivated. Um, this will sort of ease um, any bloating on your site, increase the load times a bit. Um, it'll also um, secure your site a little bit more as well because uh, plugins tend to be the main way that hackers will infiltrate your site. So having more plugins than necessary just increases the risk of that. So you want to make sure all the plugins are on your the plugins that are on your site are ones that are actually needed. They've been updated and they're actually adding something to your site um, as opposed to ones that are just sitting there. You also want to make sure the same thing goes with themes. So with WordPress, you can only one run run one theme at a time. So there's no need if you have um, lots of themes downloaded. You really only just need the one theme. Some people like to keep obviously the theme that they're using and maybe one of the WordPress 2023, 2023, 2022, whatever it is, um, for testing purposes. So if you ever need to test out a new plugin or if something's scrolling issues and you ever need to switch back, then some people like to keep a theme on hand just to switch between them. But even if you don't have that at the time when you need it, it's very easy to download. Um, so the best thing to do would be remove all of the themes. You really should just be having one theme or if you're using a child theme, then two themes essentially, but only one theme uh, can be run at uh, one time for WordPress website. So you definitely don't need more than that. Um, one thing I talked about uh, briefly was the Rank Math plugin. So um, we used it obviously to set a meta description and a page title, but it can be used um, in other ways as well. So for example, if we go back to this blog post here, um, so Rank Math, uh, you can use it to add uh, meta descriptions and titles to the uh, blog title and as well as the meta description to, and you can add it to blogs and pages, but then you can use the uh, plugin itself to actually see what this specific book post or page is missing um, in terms of SEO. So for example, um, we've obviously added in um, a meta description here. Um, and obviously we got a score after that. Um, and you can see sort of as you're updating it, it's obviously this thing ranks as well. Um, you can see sort of on the right side of Rank Math, not only do you have the preview, but you actually have a list of SEO errors. And these, this list of SEO errors is specific to your WordPress blog. Um, so what what will happen is the way Rank Math works is it'll continue to be scanning your website, your specific post, and as you make changes to it, essentially, it'll make changes to your basic SEO. So if you make changes here um, and adding things like that, then it'll improve your score. So the first thing that you wanna do in order to get an accurate score is type in the keyword. So this is the keyword essentially that you want this post to rank for. Um, depending on what version of um, Rank Math you use, if it's the free version, you can only really have one keyword. But if you wanna add more keywords to your uh, post, then you can upgrade to the pro version. I think when you're just starting out, it's really important not to overwhelm yourself. So starting out with just the free version and just having one keyword per post um, will be good. And you can see as soon as, as soon as I added a keyword, our basic SEO kind of checklist um, has, has changed and the score has improved slightly as well because this is constantly being changing as well. Um, so in terms of basic SEO, 
Um, it'll tell you basically what's missing in terms of your basic SEO. Things like the keyword appearing in the SEO title, appearing in the meta description, if it's not finding the URL. Um, all of these things are basically a checklist of what you what needs to be on your blog post and you use that to essentially as like a checklist to add that. So the first thing is that the keyword doesn't appear on the SEO title. So this is this title here. So what you want to do is then somewhere in the title add the SEO title. Um, and again, you want to make sure that you have the keyword in there, but you also it's readable, it makes sense, and that it's within this length. Um, so now that I've added that, and you can see that's automatically been updated, and our score already has improved by a lot. Um, so we've got the keyword in the title, and the other option then is that it's, miss it, it's in the description, which we have. Um, the other thing then is that it's not found in the URL, so what we can do is go back into the snippet and just type in, and sort of change that permalink as well, and you can see that's also been updated as well. Um, and one other thing that they are missing is that the content length in general is uh, such and such words long. You want to consider at least using 600. So um, depending on what kind of blog and um, yourself in general, um, it might be, uh, it can be difficult to hit that um, word count. Um, Um, but you can see as I'm adding and changing it, this is uh, my score is automatically changing. Um, again, so it uses traffic like system, so everything in green is great, but there are some things still in orange. So you can actually see um, anything different as well. The more that you add, the more uh, your score will improve. Um, and sort of it's kind of up to you to kind of go through each of the changes and see how much you need. Um, but uh, it also gives you an understanding of what makes a SEO optimized blog. So you know that adding keywords in the title and description in the URL um, all add to making sure that your blog is optimized for SEO. Um, some other things is that keyword being found in the content as well as in the first 10% in the content. So you know not only do you need to add the keyword within this content, you also need to add it sort of at the top of the content as well. Um, so it's very kind of for, uh, straightforward as well. Then it moves on to additional, so this is more advanced kind of SEO um, fixes, but again, things that you can, you you should be able to change. So things like keyword in the subheading, so um, as we talked about earlier, making sure that your, some of your headings have keywords in them um, is really great, and making sure that the keyword there matches the key focus keyword um, adds to your uh, subheadings, or adds to your score. Um, other things you're doing well is keyword density. So this is essentially how many times does the keyword appear on the text. So it scans for that as well. It scans exactly how many times that keyword is showing up and it will give you essentially an indication of whether that's enough times, whether you need more, or whether it's too much. Um, another thing that you'll get po points for is that you haven't, you, is not using the keyword before. So it's really important that each of the cut paid content on your pages are unique, that you're, there's no duplicated content. You're not adding content from other pages and pasting them over. Google do uh, notice that and they flag it as duplicated content and you will get marked down for it. Um, so making sure that you're not using a keyword that you've used before um, is a good plus. Um, and you'll see other things that uh, you're missing. So things like adding an image with your focus keyword. We saw earlier why um, because of keywords are important. Um, and for, and uh, in some cases search engines do like seeing a keyword as part of one of their one of the images that you used within the within the blog as well. Um, and then we've seen earlier as well how to do that exactly. Um, making sure that you're linking out to external resources. So that's another thing that we need to make sure that you have. Um, adding internal links. So you can see we've um, that's again come up as an issue, making sure that your links are uh, there, there's enough of them, and that they are sort of suitable to what this post is about. Um, so you can see a lot of it is, rep is repetitive of to what we've already got over. Um, the good thing about Rank Math is that it kind of gives you this kind of checklist and it updates automatically um, as soon as you make changes so you know exactly what's going well, what's going right as well. It also focuses on title and content readability, so essentially how easy is your content uh, to read for the user. Um, in terms of title, things like uh, your title not containing a power word, not containing a positive percent negative word um, can add to it. Um, so things like um, top 10 best um, services. Um, you can see 
that's automatically sort of improved. Um, and then you have the content readability. So the title readability um, focuses on the actual title and the content readability um, focuses on the actual content itself. And you can see things that they've flagged are things that we've talked about. Things like using um, shorter paragraphs, uh, using media like images and videos to break up the text. All of these things um, contribute to whether or not you have, you'll have, whether or not you'll have a, you having a high SEO score um, or a low SEO score. So you want to make sure that you have all of those and you want to make sure that they're all uh, set as well. Um, the Rank Math plugin, as mentioned before, it's free to use. Um, there are, they do have a pro version and um, depending on um, your skills as a person. So if you, this is, if SEO is something that's completely new to you um, and you're doing the optimization of your website yourself, I would recommend sticking with the free version um, because there's a lot, a lot you can work with in terms of the SEO and, and optimizing each of your blogs and each of your pages. Um, and it's a really good way to kind of get started. Um, and once you have experience in that, once you have a little bit more knowledge and a little bit more confidence, then getting the pro version and you'll get things like um, uh, additional keywords. So if a particular blog on your website can rank for more than one keyword, um, which a lot of blogs do, then you can add more keywords to that. You can also add um, alias keywords or um, similar keywords. Essentially, if the topic you're writing about, um, if there are other ways of calling that topic, whether that's alternative keywords, um, you can use the pro versions to uh, add that onto your site and use different keywords as well because there might be some things that um, people will have different words for. Um, so you want to make sure that you're hitting as much sort of coverage as much as possible. But again, uh, the free version of Rank Math is a lot to work with, um, especially if you're new to this and you're doing the optimization yourself, then even just putting the free version on and optimizing the blogs and the pages that you have um, first and making sure that you get all of them into the green score as much as possible. Um, you'll then get enough sort of knowledge, enough experience to then play around with a bit more of the advanced features that kind of come with the pro version um, of Rank Math. So definitely something to look out for as well. Um, other things as well with Rank Math that kind of come uh, with the plugin itself that you can decide to use if you want um, as well. Uh, it's all within their dashboard and their general settings. So if you click on dashboard, um, they have loads of other features as well and you can decide whether you actually want them or not. Um, so things like the 404 monitor which we saw earlier, um, the 404 monitor and the redirections. So the redirections we've seen earlier used to actually add uh, redirections from broken links. Um, if you have already have a redirections plugin on your website, um, and you want to use, but you still want to use Rank Math. Um, then what you want to do is make sure that this is deactivated because you shouldn't have more than one de redirections plugin onto your website. Um, if you already have one that's already set up and you like using it, then you can just disable the Rank Math one for now, um, and then just keep using the other one. Um, again, you don't want to have too many plugins on your website, so if it's possible to remove the other one and stick with the Rank Math one, totally fine. Um, but if you don't want, if you want to stick with the one that you already have, just make sure that the Rank Math one is deactivated and then keep using the other one. Um, the other thing that's really good um, it, with Rank Math that comes free is the 404 monitor. So it will record what URLs that visitors and search engines run into that lead to 404 errors. And then you can then take that monitor and that list of monitor uh, 404 errors and then turn them into redirections. Um, you can also add a link counter, so this will count the total number of links and external links to and from inside your posts, things like that. So it gives you a really kind of up-to-date way to kind of see what links that you currently have on your website. And one of the most important things then is connecting to Google Search Console. So every, uh, with Google Search Console, um, it will basically allow you to keep track of how your website is doing. Uh, in terms of Google search engine rankings. So you can connect your Rank Math with Google Search Console to see the most kind of important information from, from Google directly into your WordPress dashboard. It's all kind of imported there as well. Um, it's also really important that if you are going to install Rank Math, if you already have a Rank, uh, an SEO plugin um, installed onto your site, it's really important to make sure if you're gonna switch to Rank Math that you export your the settings and 
SEO information from your previous um, SEO plugin and then import that within Rank, Ma Rank Math. So if you already have, for example, Yoast SEO um, all in one SEO, SEO ability, even with the redirections plugin, what you can do is import all of those settings first, um, then remove it and then import them um, into your, so you can export those information first and then import them into your rank math. So you're not losing the SEO um, that's already been set up on your site. Um, it's already kind of imported in here. And then all you need to do is just click import and you'll have that set up on your site as well. So you know, it's really important that you do that first because if you were to just disable, deactivate and remove the plugin without exporting and importing anything, you'll use, you're losing the SEO content that you already have. So you need to make sure that you, you get that uh, imported first. Overall though, you can see that using the SEO ability tool, um, it's a really good way to keep to get an understanding of how your site is doing in terms of the SEO. Um, I think it's really important to keep monitoring your site for SEO. So um, obviously run the report once, Make look at all the tasks that it's asking you, fix as much as possible and then run it again to see how many of it has fixed, what are still missing um, and things like that. It's really important that you keep uh, monitoring your site for SEO. So not just running the report once or twice, but keep running it maybe once a month, once every two months or twice a month, whatever it is, because there will always be room for improvement. If you are constantly updating your site with new content, new pages, new images, then there will be new issues that will pop up. Um, so it's really important that you keep uh, running an audit sort of every so often so that you're on top of any new issues um, and that you don't lose your ranking in search, Google search engine results um, and you're up there as high as possible. Um, SEO ability is just one of the f many free tools out there. Um, but it's very kind of straightforward. Any issues, it kind of explains everything nicely um, and gives you this kind of report list basically. Um, and you can obviously get more help as well um, online as well. But it's a really good plugin. And again, it's really good to make sure that you're on top of these, these issues. Um, a lot of the issues that we've seen, they're very kind of common, but also very easy to fix as well. Um, so it's really important that you get that um, fixed as much as possible. I hope you enjoyed this video. We have lots of other videos as well, um, talking about SEO and also performance as well that um, are also a big thing to consider whenever you are running a WordPress website. Um, give this video a like and subscribe for more.